मेजर कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन इज मेड बाई क्वारेंगुलर कार्टलेट वोमर and perpendicular plate of ethmoids and minor contributions from nasal process of frontal bone small contribution from nasal bones nasal spines of maxilla and rostrum of sphenoid so we divide nasal septum into three parts columella that is made up of medial crura of lower lateral cartilage membranous septum that is lined by skin stratified squamous keratinized epithelium contain here and then septum proper that is made up of quadrangular cartilage perpendicular plate of ethmoid vomer and small contribution from rostrum of sphenoid spine of maxilla and spine of frontal bone so usually trauma is causes fracture of nasal septum nasal septum fracture can be associated with fracture of nasal bones so there can be some external deformity so nasal septum fracture will lead to epistaxis because of tear in the mucosa patient might have pain patient might have dislocation of septum there may be deflected nasal septum and associated external injuries can lead to periorbital ecchymosis nasal fracture can lead to development of septal hematoma that is collection of blood beneath the mucopericon so how will you diagnose nasal septum fracture clinically when you will see inside the nasal cavity there will be deflected nasal septum or you can advise x ray nose lateral view to see the nasal bone fracture as well as fracture of the nasal septum treatment early recognition is essential if there is deflected nasal septum it can be lifted with the help of welsham and dash forcep and we can adjust it immediately if there is associated hematoma we can drain the hematoma to prevent further complications if you are not treating fracture of the nasal septum it can lead to permanent dislocation permanent deflection of nasal septum that is called dns sometimes whenever there is dislocation of nasal septum from maxillary crest there will be asymmetry of nasal tip that is called anterior caudal dislocation if it is associated with external nasal bone fracture then there will be external deformity untreated hematoma can lead to septal abscess formation later on necrosis of cartilage so deviated nasal septum in etiology main cause is trauma that can be developmental trauma you can see in this picture <coughs> after birth patient is having deflection of nasal septum sometimes it is more common in certain races and sometimes it is common so deflected nasal septum we can divide it into anterior dislocation you can see you will see anterior margin of nasal septum in one of the nostril while raising the tip of the patient c shaped nasal deflection there will be obstruction of one side and there will be white patent nasal cavity of other side so there will be compensatory hypertrophy of in fear turbinate of that side s shaped deflection 
septum is deflected posteriorly on one side and dentially on other side. Septal spur that is sharp deflection at the junction of bone and cartilage. You can see in this picture this is septal spur. So usually it is between the vomer and the maxillary crest. Sometimes there is diffuse thickening. If you are not treating septal hematoma or and if you are a patient is using some um, uh, nasal uh, de decongestant such as xylometazolin, there will be permanent thickening of. So how will you diagnose your case? It depends on history, clinical examination and investigations. So it can happen at any age. If patient is having deflect, deflected nasal septum and there is no symptom, so there is no treatment is required. But deflected nasal septum, patient can present with symptoms with this DNS that is deflected nasal septum at any age. More common it is seen in males. So most common symptom is nasal obstruction that can be unilateral in cases of C-shaped deflection and bilateral in cases of S-shaped deflection. And there may be permanent nasal obstruction of one side and intermittent nasal obstruction of other side that is due to compensatory hypertrophy of inferior tubni. In this C-shaped deflection, there is wide patent um, nasal cavity of one side so there will be hypertrophy of this inferior turbinate then headache that is the complication of DNS due to development of sinusitis if there is complete blockage patient can uh, might have anosmia that is the uh, loss of sense of smell and hyposmia is decrease in sense of smell. If it is associated with external nasal fracture, so there can be some external deformity after trauma. Or when patient comes to you with deflected nasal septum, you have to inspect the uh, external nose to find out any associated external nasal deformity. So deflected nasal septum can cause certain complications like sinusitis leading to headache, recurrent laryngitis leading to hoarseness of voice and middle ear infection, recurrent acute separative otitis media and also the OME, otitis media with effusion. Epistaxis when dry air touches the nasal septum that is deflected can cause erosion of the nasal mucosa leading to epistaxis. And if there is spur, there will be angulation of the blood vessels that can get easily ruptured by trauma. So there will be ep On examination, examination is done with the help of thudicum speculum that is called anterior rhinoscopy. You will raise the tip of the patient to see any anterior caudal deformity. Caudal test is done. In this, you will detect the cheek of the patient if there is DNS that is almost touching the inferior turbinate. Patient comes to you with unilateral nasal obstruction and when you will detect the cheek of the patient, actually you are detecting the inferior turbinate. So there will be patient uh, nasal obstruction symptom will be improved with this caudal, caudal test. Then patency test, you will put spatula beneath the nostril. You can see fogging of the um, spatula. Sense of olfaction, smell sensation is checked to see if there is anosmia or hyposmia. Investigations that are required, X-ray PNS, water view is helpful. We can see all the sinuses, so associated complication of DNS can be seen. In this X-ray, you can see sharp deflection, that is spur. You can see haziness of maxillary sinus as well as the frontal sinus. And this is the endoscopic view. 
you can see spur in this spur and this is deflected nasal septum middle turbinate and inferior turbinate. Then if patient comes to you with symptoms you will give treatment. If, uh, if you are examining some patient and there is deflected nasal septum and patient is not having any symptom then no treatment is required. So treatment is mainly surgical treatment. Two types of procedures can be performed. SMR that is submucous resection and septoplasty that is done uh, usually to prevent serious complications. So complications associated with this procedure is are the bleeding, septal hematoma, septal abscess, septal perforation, saddle deformity, sinecki and toxic shock syndrome. Bleeding is most common usually it is uh, during the operation. We uh, can prevent this bleeding by injecting xyl xylocaine mixed with adrenaline and with local application of uh, ribbon gauze that is dipped in adrenaline. Septal hematoma develop within 24 hours. There is collection of blood beneath the mucopericondrium. If it is not drained, it can lead to infection that is septal abscess. If there is multiple tears on both side of mucopericondrium, it can lead to septal perforation that is free communication between two nasal cavities. If you are not, or if you are removing the cartilage that is quadrangular cartilage and it can lead to saddle deformity. If there is, uh, usually we prevent this sinecki formation by keeping splint. So, sinecki is the adherence inside the nasal cavity after operation. It is usually seen after uh, 2 to 3 weeks. Toxic shock syndrome. Whenever nasal cavity is packed to prevent the bleeding. So, if it is not sterilized, it contains staph aureus. So, preformed toxins absorbed in the blood and can cause septic shock. That is toxic shock syndrome. Patient will present with um, uh, hypotension, fever, and so there are diff certain differences between SMR and septoplasty. You can see in CN, in uh, septoplasty, we give freer in CN at the anterior caudal margin at the mucocutaneous junction, and we raise the flap on one side mucopericondrium and mucoperiosteal flaps are raised then we separate the cartilage from axillary crest and we will go to the opposite side and we will raise the mucoperiosteal flap of opposite side spur is removed and the deflected part of nasal septum is removed and the septum is stitched to the nasal spine in this case both sides of mucopericondrium is raised that is really done in so these are the instruments used in this procedure you can see we are stitching the nasal quadrangular cartilage with the nasal spine Killian speculum gouge hammer frere speculum frere elevator thudicum nasal speculum double action bone nibbler and nasal dressing forcep and this is scissors, crocodile forcep and suction tip. So these are the differences between SMR and septoplasty. SMR really done in adults and not it is the, because it, in this we have, have to remove cartilage. So it is not performed in children. Septoplasty can be done at any age. Killian and CN that is 5 mm behind the mucocutaneous junction it is given in SMR to prevent um, uh, excessive removal of cartilage anteriorly. Frere in CN we have to give in CN at the anterior caudal margin at the mucocutaneous junction. 
Mucopericonjal flap is raised on both sides in SMR but only on one side in septoplastic. Quadrangular cartilage, big piece is removed in SMR but in septoplasty only the deviated part is removed. So complications are more common with SMR, usually the saddle deformity and septal hematoma and perforation but these complications are less. So one complication is septal hematoma. Other causes of this collection of blood beneath the mucopericontium are spine bleeding disorder. We can see in some certain bleeding disorder there is collection of blood in the beneath the mucopericontium. Other causes are nasal trauma that can be itrogenic surgery. So patient will present with Bilateral nasal obstruction, when you will raise the tip of the nose, you can see globular swelling and when you will touch it with the help of probe, it will be fluctuant. So there will be feeling of fullness of nose, there uh, can be frontal headache and patient will present with also rhinorrhea. So rhinorrhea and nasal obstruction. So treatment is... If patient comes to you immediately, so you can do needle aspiration after suction and after removal of this blood, we will pack the nose to prevent uh, reaccumulation. Then if patient comes to you late and uh, you will have to give incision and you will suck out all the blood and again the nasal cavities are packed to prevent reaction. If you are not treating septal hematoma, it can lead to secondary infection that is called septal abscess. Other causes are frunculosis, boil of the nose and some acute infection, measles and typhoid can also cause. So clinical features are almost the same but there will be severe pain, patient will be febrile and there will be severe tenderness and redness over the tip of the nose and there will be pussy discharge can be seen through the nasal cavities. Patient will be in distress. So if you are not treating this case, there will be saddle deformity. There will be necrosis of cartilage and later on there will be um, external deformity that is called saddle deformity. Lethal complication is cavernous sinus thrombosis because of valveless um, veins. The infection can go into the intracranial cavity. So, you uh, will diagnose with the help of clinical features and clinically with the help of probe, you will see fluctuant swelling and you will treatment and analgesic and nose is packed with the help of nasal packing. To prevent so now solve this scenario 20 years old boy presented with right sided permanent nasal obstruction left sided intermittent nasal obstruction for last five years Complaining of recurrent headache, recurrent laryngitis and ear infections. On examination, septum is seen more on right side as compared to left side. Diagnosis and management. So you can see age is 20 years. That is more prone, prone to trauma. Then recurrent infections and there is septum is deflected to one side. So Diagnosis is made on the basis of history, clinical examination and investigations. On history, there is nasal obstruction and associated complications. Right side, left side, there is intermittent nasal obstruction due to compensatory hypertrophy of inferior turbinate. And on right side, there is obstruction due to deflected nasal septum. So you will make your diagnosis by the help of clinical examination. On clinical examination, you will see left-sided hypertrophic inferior turbinate and right-sided DNS. You can advise X-ray occipitomental view to see any associated sinusitis and also the 
deflection of uh, bone there are posteriorly uh, anteriorly there is uh, deflection of cartilage but posteriorly there is deflection of bone that is vomer so management depends on diagnosis and diagnosis is based on history clinical examination and investigation after making diagnosis you will treat the patient so gold standard is surgical treatment you will treat the infection with the help of antibiotic that is medical treatment then you will perform septoplasty that is preferable as compared to smr so Thank you.